Okay, um, thanks. I'll talk about uh, what NIST is doing about the um, possible um, deployment of uh, quantum computers in the next couple of decades. Okay, so the problem is that large quantum computers, they would break uh, most of our public key crypto. That includes RSA, Diffie Hellman, elliptic curve crypto. Uh, symmetric crypto uh, would not be affected. Uh, it's surprising uh, the number of uh, meetings I go where people tell me that you know, AES is gone after quantum computers. That's uh, not the case. Uh, but uh, we will need to make keys uh, longer. Full transition to alternatives takes a long time. Um, Judging from the history of, of, uh, of these things, we, we could be easily claim about 20 years, okay? Uh, I suspect that there may be a, a greater sense of urgency uh, with respect to uh, the advent of quantum computing. So um, I'm thinking maybe about 10 years or more. Um, so the time to worry about this is, is now, okay? This is, doesn't uh, uh, see enough attention from my point of view. There are long-term privacy and security implications which uh, affect us now. Uh, from the privacy perspective, there are things that are being stored now by agencies and possibly industry, which will later, which can't be opened now, but will be, may be opened uh, if computer, quantum computers are built, okay? And, uh, you know, if you have kids or grandchildren, uh, their DNA profiles may be stored in, in ways that are um, maybe opened in the future. So it's, I think it's a severe and uh, uh, threat that we're facing now. Not, not when computers are built, the quantum computers are built, but now. It's for, and this, uh, something similar with respect to security implications. I think uh, if quantum computers are built, uh, and they are deployed, we will see many years, uh, possibly decades, during which we're going to be discovering all kinds of things being protected by uh, pre-quantum keys. Okay, to get that stuff out of the, all of our uh, uh, applications uh, is going to be a very difficult task. Okay, so NIST has a post-quantum cryptography project that uh, has been going on for about five years now. Uh, our goal is to monitor progress in quantum computers and quantum algorithms, uh, to find and standardize quantum resistant alternatives uh, for public key encryption, uh, key agreement, and digital signatures. and to ensure the transparency of the process and the integrity of the outcome. This is especially important after the uh, uh, Snowden revelations. This is um, not a competition. Uh, I keep saying this over and over and over again and people keep coming to me and say, hey, how, how about the NIST competition? Um, I hope that we will develop a significant uh, community consensus at the end of the day, that uh, NIST will basically serve as a, a, a sounding board and, and event, eventually we'll have to make a decision, but hopefully the decision will really be made by the community. Okay. There's not, it's not necessarily true that we'll uh, standardize just one uh, candidate for each of the applications, we may standardize uh, several. The evaluation criteria, when we have a competition, the evaluation criteria needs to be written in stone because later, if we start changing things later in, in, the, in the game, people cry foul, okay? Now be warned that, that uh, this is not written in stone. Uh, we know too little about quantum computers right now 
Um, we know too little about the, complex, the real, actual complexity of, of candidates to be writing these things in stone and saying we're not going to change it no, no matter what happens during the next seven years. Okay? So criteria hopefully will evolve and it will reflect our gaining knowledge of, of the situation. There's a call for proposals, which is out. Uh, this is the, um, the link where it may be they may be submitted. The deadline is November 30 of uh, this year. The discussion about this is through the PQC forum. The, word, the, actual, the current wording of the call for proposals follows uh, public discussion in this forum, uh, sometimes uh, very loud public discussion, and uh, that's the way we like it, I guess. Um, and uh, th this is also in this forum where the submissions and germane issues will uh, be discussed. Uh, evaluation criteria is one of those issues that uh, needs to uh, stay in the discussion table. Uh, to join this uh, mail, mailing list, just send mail to this link here. Okay, so we are uh, agnostic um, about what uh, uh, what techniques uh, look the best right now. We choose to be agnostic. Uh, we want to have an open mind as, uh, with respect to uh, all the possible ways that people may want to solve this problem, okay? But uh, I'll give you a rough um, listing of what we see out there now. Um, so for signatures, we see hash-based signatures, code-based, lattice-based, and multivariate-based uh, signatures. Uh, the dot, dot, dot means that I'm not going to be held to uh, uh, this being an exhaustive list in any of these, okay? For public key encryption, we have, see lattice-based, code-based, uh, multivariate. There are others, uh, braid groups and things like that. Um, for key agreement, um, w one can uh, s decide that key agreement is not a real topic that once, because once you solve PKE, you have uh, key agreement. Uh, no, we chose not to. We, we want to call it a, a separate uh, problem. Uh, but you know it can be solved uh, solving the, the public key encryption problem. But there are lattice-based and isogeny-based and other uh, types of dedicated uh, key agreement uh, protocols out there. With respect to um, what will change what, what, in terms of speed and sizes of things, um, speed looks good. That's uh, surprising. Uh, to me, anyhow, it, the, some of these systems look blindingly fast. Um, key sizes uh, not so good; they may increase significantly. Uh, some signature sizes look big, not terribly big, but they they look big. We'll have to, you know, collectively decide uh, that's okay or not. There may be a significant. Uh, increase in ciphertext size for short uh, plain text. Uh, I really have no idea how, you know, you know, how industry feels about that, what that might do to applications. Um, we really do need uh, to have a, an impact assessment by industry, especially by industry, but you know, also by, by uh, the community at large. And we need to have that impact assessment now, as soon as possible, because once, once the, um, there are very few candidates left, and there's some cl clear, com you know, two or three clear candidates are, are likely to win this thing, to, to end up being the standard, um, 
then the impact assessments get uh, all muddled by the, the fact that people will be you know, uh, uh, advancing their, their favorite uh, candidates. If we can do it now, uh, that would be very useful. Um, what's uh, public discussion? Uh, there's this ongoing discussion. If you've seen the, the, the um, PQC forum, you'll see that there's been this uh, rather strident disagreement about uh, this uh, measure of, um, of security that, that's in the call for proposals. Um, the, my, my position about this is, is that, is, so in this, in this uh, security levels, to, to really um, answer the, the specific wording of the call for proposals, you, uh, it looks like you need to uh, decide how many quantum gates that's required to break your candidate. Okay. On the other hand, uh, some of us, uh, uh, let me see, I, I feel that no candidate should have to be, no proposer should have to be a expert on quantum computation in order to, to put it in a submission. So if you have any problems with, with you know, uh, putting a number to this, uh, to this number of quantum gates uh, uh, question, contact us or, or contact the forum. Um, this is uh, as open as, uh, as it can be this, this process, okay? So contact us, we'll, we'll sort it out. Uh, are we doing, uh, are we just an uh, uh, arm of the NSA? Um, I, I guess I can't blame the community. I, I have another project which is dear to my heart, which is the NIST randomness beacon. And, I, and sometimes I Google that beacon and it says the NIST NSA beacon. And there's pictures of me with like horns and things. Uh, um, so this committee, this, this PQC project is a committee of eight people. There's a report out that spelled out our understanding of this about you know, eight months ago or so. Uh, that report contains the names of seven of the eight current members of this team. There's no secrecy there. There's, there's just eight members of NIST right now. We sit at the table. The NSA has no, no seat at that table. Okay. However, uh, you know, times are a little uh, scary right now. So um, watch us, keep watching us, okay? Uh, we need that, that's our, that you, you, you um, protect us by demanding our transparency. Okay, an another topic that has been making the rounds uh, is uh, demands that future standards uh, make bad implementations harder. Um, I suspect this would be very hard to do in the abstract to, to, for us NIST to agree that we're going to include in the standards this requirement that, you know, if you, if, if you say develop a AES2, it will have all kinds of uh, uh, tests to check for possible bad implementations. I think, I think that's just not going to fly. I may be wrong. So if you feel strongly about that, please argue with respect to the, the candidates in the post-quantum uh, cryptography competition. Please make your views uh, be uh, heard uh, in the NIST forum. On the other hand, I, I think that some of this, some of these, um, I don't know, prophylactics, call it, can be put in place uh, at the end of the day the game. You know, if, if at the end of the, this process, uh, five years, six years from now, it looks like we're really going to do this, standardize this particular al algorithm, and you have a good idea of a way to standardize it to make it uh, more uh, resilient to, to bad implementations, then that, that's probably the time to, to argue for those things. If you try to argue for them as a, as a general rule for standards, I think that's not going to fly. Uh, how am I doing here? 
Okay, the timeline. Um, formal call is out. November 30 is the deadline for the submissions. We'll have, um, uh, during 2018, we'll have a, a, a workshop. And then uh, that will be followed by three to five years of analysis. We'll report the findings in one to one, two workshops during this phase. And hopefully two years after that, we'll have uh, the standards ready. Uh, so, so this is, uh, you know, seven years, uh, this process may take a good seven years from now. Thank you. So I have to ask, in the, in the call, there was no, like, for signatures, there was no specification on whether you're looking for stateless or stateful signatures? Any opinions on that? Uh, I think we're, we're first. We are going to take both yeah. candidates for both. Uh, whether um, so, so st stateful have this this uh, private key size problem, which is gigantic. Uh, so, if there are advantages, um, if people can argue that for advantages that make us wanting to do that. Despite that, then we'll definitely consider them. So both are in play. Okay, good. Okay, it was my understanding that he, uh, NIST had pre pre uh, publicly said that uh, they were not interested in hash based signatures. You, you are contradicting that? Yes, I don't know who said that. I was wondering, you mentioned uh, industry impact assessments, and I'm wondering if any federal agency is doing their own impact assessment that would serve as a model for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and if not, whether they were, the federal government would be interested in stimulating any industry activity around that. Oh boy, I think that question, the second part of that question is about my, my, my pay grade. Uh, uh, I can certainly uh, pass that, that uh, suggestion uh, on uh, with respect to what is being done by a federal agency um, other than the NSA which is not going to tell us uh, I wouldn't trust the assessment that any of us uh, any of these agencies including NIST can do it's I think it's it's beyond our capabilities thank you anyway yeah. actually I also wanted to clarify you said that's a panel of eight people yeah seven of which are public and one of which is... is uh, no, we just hired him. That's why he's not in the... the everybody's, everybody's name is public. The, the eighth person was hired after this, the, this report was published. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll see that the, the list of, of... You know, I'll see that the list of people who sit at this table is, is put out somewhere. That, that will, okay. yeah. yeah, last question. Um, you mentioned uh, making uh, bad implementations harder and perhaps delaying that consideration a little. Uh, perhaps another way of putting it is that you want to make correct implementations easier, uh, and certainly that could perhaps be prioritized early, so that instead of trying to uh, place landmines for bad implementations, we certainly avoid putting in complexities that make good implementations less likely. Uh, and that perhaps is a, a good consideration yeah. earlier on. That, uh, that should be in the minds of all, everybody who plans to submit this. I, I, yeah, so it's a, so that's, take that as a suggestion to your submissions. Great, thanks a lot.